This is Bertoni's 2012 concept car. It's a one-off. It's going to Beijing next month. When the motor shows finish, it's going to one very, very lucky owner. Bertoni have always been synonymous with interesting design, even more so today. With me is Mike Robinson, your development and design director for That's Bertoni. Right. Tell me all about your motor car here today. Well, the most important thing today is we're celebrating a 100 year anniversary. That means we need to find a way to look not only at the past 100 years, but also the next 100 years. Yep. Find the right balance between the past and the future. It's a very important thing. If you go too far in the past, it becomes a retro car, which I don't like at all. Yep. Too far in the future, nothing to do with Duccio Bertone. So it's important to have that right balance. You will notice right away the architecture of the car, a classic two-seater, mid-engine, a supercar layout is a typical car that Nuccio Bertone invented. Sure. Even when they created the supercar. They also created the cab forward car. Thanks to the mid-engine, pushed the whole, uh, the, the whole cockpit forward. So you see the, the very fast windshield here, which you'll re recognize as reminiscent of the Strato Zero. Totally. Yeah, it was my favorite <laughs> car of all times. Yeah, okay? I had a model when I was a kid. You kidding? That was a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful car. I discovered that car when I was 16 years old in Seattle, Washington. Yeah, it just sets you yeah. off for life. And, it, and it, it, it changed my life. So I decided at that point to become a car designer, and here I am today presenting a car inspired by that Strato Zero. So one thing you recognize is the windshield here. Yep. It's, very, it's narrow at the, at the lower part and wide at the upper part, opposite of all cars on the road today. Sure. So what do we do? We put up a, a point right here with an eye level section. We want to make sure we have good visibility inside. Got Use it. that as a, as a pivot point for this line. So this one came in, but this one came way out. So now, look, how, look how wide it is out here. It's also, huge. How, how higher it is compared to the rest of the roof. This thing looks predatory though. It's almost got haunches and so on. What does this detail do to the airflow? Okay. Is, it, is it a nightmare in a wind tunnel? Or? Absolutely not. Uh, okay. Interesting because the, the laminal airflow goes right over the top of it. It sticks to the car about that far above the, the surface. Okay. So it has nothing to do with uh, aerodynamics. It has something to do with more structure. Because yep. this is a, a tensile structure concept taken from the, the, the Munich uh, uh, Stadium, Olympic Stadium back in the, in the, in the late 80s and the things. And these are all things that, that are, we're trying to bring in new technology from outside the automobile industry to create new, new directions for this. So we like to create a uh, very lightweight, very uh, high, st high structural rigidity uh, so solution for uh, a new, new type of technology for automobiles. So we like to have these, these things that are just held by, by tension yeah. rather than held by a pillar and a beam. Got it. The other interesting, thing, uh, this interesting thing about this is that this whole area here we think looks like the eye of a crocodile. Yes, it a, totally. A reptilian. Yeah. Okay. Because a crocodile has his eyes above the water, it's just, it's just sinking through the water. This car has the same kind of look because we think it looks very menacing, very aggressive, and, yeah. and you, you, you're almost afraid to get close to it because because you think it's going to bite. It's going to bite you. Yeah. But as you well know, wherever you have something that you're prohibited to use, it creates a, a desire. Totally. And the desire means you want to have more of this car. And so you, you even get lucky to, to open up and, in, and get inside it. Well, the car is 500 horsepower. So to drive this car, it's going to be even more menacing. So you have to, it's really a, a, a excitingly... It's the whole uh, experience. A whole new experience of this car. The other thing that uh, strikes me, going back to the original 70s concept yes. cars and so on, Nowadays, it must be so much easier. Looking at the windscreen detail, this is completely flush with the roof. You don't have that ugly trim you used to have. No, no Everything's no. bonded now, so... Clean, clean, clean. Yeah. Technology means that we can glue everything in. You don't need to have all this heavy chrome and stuff around it, so it's much cleaner now. Much cleaner car. Can we take a look at the interior? Absolutely. I just want one little detail first. Yeah. Uh, uh, the front end of the car has a patented safety feature, which is front-end stoplight. These brake front lights, end stop. Yeah, front end brake lights, because you usually have a red brake light in the back, yeah. which all cars must have today. We've added a front end stop light, which is the center area here, that lights up this sort of a icy cold blue, uh, uh, blue white color, yeah. because it helps pedestrian recognize if the car is going to slow, slow down or not. If I look and see the car coming at me and say, oh no, it's yeah. not braking, then I, I take a step back. But if I see it's braking, okay, then I can walk right in through. So it's a, it's a new active safety feature we think should become part of all automobiles in the near future. That's patented? It's patented by Bertone, yes. Wow. So, so we're trying to add innovation, not only just styling to these vehicles. It's a good design feature as well. It's an excellent design feature. I think it could very possibly become a new feature because all cars have DRL today. We can have a dual density DRL, which yep. lights up brightly, so you see if this car is braking or not. 
Mike, how long did it take to design this car and get to the stage where we're at? Usually a concept car in, in an OEM takes from 12 to 15 months. That's a normal development time. Some get it down to, to, to eight months. Uh, this car was designed and manufactured in all inside Bertone in three and a half months. Wow. Uh, it's a record, record time. And, and, and the reason why is I've got so much outside work with OEMs, we just <laughs> didn't have time to get down to our big 100 year anniversary car. <laughs> but sometimes speed is not necessarily a negative thing because it makes you, it forces you to jump to conclusions, jump to solutions, and just, just do it. You don't yeah. have time to do it 18 times. It, it has to be right the first time. There are a lot of um, styling cues. I don't know if it's me or it's just the day, but bits of it remind me of Alpha 8C as well. Switch gear, knobs and so on. It, well, how much is sourced from other motor cars? How much well, is unique? Well, the reason is that, uh, um, in, as in most uh, one-off prototypes, like this one is, uh, um, all the switch gear has to be carryover from the donor car. Sure. Okay, so uh, the, the 8C gives a lot of carryover uh, stuff from other, other vehicles because they just don't have enough uh, manufacturing potential to make a, sure. a, a specific switches for that car. So they use carryover, like we used to do in the past. They used to use Alfa Romeo headlights for, for yep. Maseratis and things like that. Okay? Absolutely. So in this particular interior, we did use a lot of carryover pieces from the donor car. Okay. Uh, and the donor car is a mid-engine, uh, big V8, uh, uh, 500 horsepower beast, which is uh, a wonderful, wonderful car. We won't mention the name of this car because it's just a Bertone car today. We're not talking about other other manufacturers. Of course, you, 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 we're interested in the yeah. Bertone design, yeah. the Bertone concept. But and so on. The, the, the very fortunate uh, a collector who will take this car home and put it in his garage uh, at the Beijing show, because this will be sh the, the drive of a car will be shown at the Beijing show. This is just a, a, a dress rehearsal kind of thing, right? Sure. The, 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 the style mock up. And, and that, that guy will know what kind of engine it has, obviously, but uh, for, for our purposes today, it's just as well that we should talk about uh, a one-off prototype that just has a Bertone brand. So you will see a lot of switches in here that come from existing cars, which is, yeah. which is okay. And, and, and what we're really trying to see is, this is a, a minimalist interior. It doesn't have a lot of technology, a lot of uh, wild things on it. But what first thing you notice is the uh, the aluminum support, the structure that, yes, that yes. on the left and right of you, which is, gives it a lot of visual protection. These yes. are all uh, very strong components. So in a side crash, you are 100% protected. You have no possibility of being touched in a crash because you have a, a, a big crash beam here and big crash beam here. So and these doors are wonderfully light as well. I noticed yes. when I shot that one earlier. Yeah. It it it. It felt reassuring, but it didn't feel incredibly heavy. And yes, yes. I, I guess the uh, the weight of this car sort of we, we got the weight. Well. Yeah, very. We got just the weight down as much as possible because horsepower to weight ratio for any supercar is extremely important. Again, uh, other thing that strikes me: the attention to detail. Bearing in mind it's a prototype, it's extremely tight. It's well put together, and details like this quilted headlining, which is absolutely fabulous. You've got the echo of the orange on the steering wheel, on the mm -hmm. dash display, and so on. And these seats are incredibly comfortable. Yeah, yeah. We worked Definitely. very hard with our ergonomic uh, department at Bertone to work on the comfort of the seats. You need good uh, uh, side, you know, lateral G uh, protection in in a, in, a, in a seat because when you're driving high speeds, you're going to have to be locked in. But I don't want to be uncomfortable to be no. able to drive fast. Well, bearing in mind, you know, I'm vertically challenged. You're significantly taller than me. Can you fit into one of Absolutely. these? Absolutely. Yeah. I just, I just, my hair just barely touches the uh, the headliner which yeah. is amazing. And in the original Stratos Zero, we don't mention before, I have to turn my head 90 degrees, otherwise you can't fit in the car. That's yeah. 83 centimeters tall, and just there's no way a, 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 a tall person can fit in there. So I want to make sure this is a car comfortable uh, with AC, with everything, all the, all the comforts of home, yeah. but a high, high performance car. There's 315 kilometers per hour, so it's going to be a real performance car. What about uh, production units and so on? Any well, figures yet? Not, no, no, uh, uh, idea for production so far. It's going to be one, a one-off car yep. for the Beijing Auto Show. We'll make the tour of the, around the world for a 100-year anniversary. Yep. It'll be sold to a, a lucky co a collector. One hell but, of a lucky uh, collector. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, uh, but uh, there's no plans to put this into a, a limited production. Should we re get requests for three or four or five more, I would love to find a way to, to, to put, build them and, and offer them. But for now, just a, a one-off exclusive. In bearing uh, in mind that you've got a really, really strong market in the Far East, particularly in China, if you've got enough people begging you at Beijing, you do you think they might persuade we you? Could, we could be persuaded. Uh, but uh, for now, it's just an important thing is that 
this is for us a statement of what Bertone, the DNA of Bertone is. Sure, and, and I, I, I feel that just sitting in the uh, car. Mm -hmm. One interesting feature we put in this car is that, uh, as in most uh, high-performance two-seater mid-engine sports cars, visibility is a terrible, terrible problem. Yes. And and so because it's very obstruction, a lot of heavy obstruction. If you look in the rearview mirror, you see a backlight, uh, a rearview mirror, you rear yeah. a, a, a rear window, and that it's just very normal. But if you look closer, it's a television screen. See the TV screen yes. behind you? It's so, but it's unobstructed TV. It's unobstructed yes. backlight. So you can look in the back of the car without having all the the engine and the and the rear of the car. And it's a it's a perfect view as well, yeah, isn't it? It's, it's, it's more than clear. I would normally get out. Absolutely. Of that. So we have a vir a virtual uh, backlight in this car, which means it offers the possibility not only to be able to drive uh, in freeway mode like it is now, or park mode, we're down below, yep. or you can even have a little camera in the and turn it into a, a a transparent window to show a picture of the the engine to your honey right next to you if you wanted to. I like the idea <laughs> of that. And you've also got this extra vision in the A-post yes, as well. Yes, so. yeah, I open up a little bit better visibility. Visibility is so important for high-speed driving that uh, very, sure. very important. There aren't really any blind spots, are there? Considering, yeah, yeah. you know, supercars, yeah. there's always something that doesn't quite work properly. Exactly. This one so feels very good. It's, it's a, a, a very cozy interior, very simple interior. We wanted to make sure it has a, a very high co coherence with the outside and the inside. But I think it's uh, also a very modern interior, which which uh, still get that all important Bertone exactly. wow factor. Yeah, get that DNA wow factor from Bertone.